As messages pass through a node-red flow, each one arrives at a node as a separate event. That can pose a challenge if you want a flow to do something using information from multiple messages. This video will show you two of the common patterns for handling this type of flow, both of which can be adapted to most scenarios. The first pattern uses the join node. This node is normally used to join sequence of messages, such as those created by a split node, back into a single message. But it can also be used in manual mode to join together otherwise unrelated messages. In manual mode, you have to tell the node what property of each message it should join together, how it should join them, and how it should decide when to send on the joined message. For the scenarios we're considering in this video, the node should be used to create either a key value object or a merged object. The choice will depend on the structure of the messages being handled. Let's look at each of those modes. Here we have two separate MQTT nodes receiving sensor data. One is an internal temperature, the other is an external temperature, and we want to create a flow that monitors the difference between these two values. We can wire each of these to a join node and configure the node to create a key value object, using the value of message.topic as the key. We are joining two streams of messages, so we want the join node to send on a message once it has two distinct parts. We also want it to send on the message whenever either part updates, so we tick the every subsequent message option. Wiring this together and deploying the flow, you can see we now get a single message containing the latest value of each sensor. Now, let's consider the case where the message payloads aren't single values, but are themselves objects containing multiple key value pairs. We can configure the join node to create a merged object, taking all key value pairs from one message payload and merging it with the key value pairs of the second message. As we know we're going to get two properties from one message and three from the other, we tell the node to send when it has a total of five properties in the merged object. Deploying this flow, you can see we now get a single message with all of the properties from both messages. The join node offers a number of other options for deciding when to send out a message. For example, you can set a timeout to ensure it sends something even if all the expected parts haven't arrived yet. You can also force it to send what it has currently got by passing it a message with the message.complete property set. The other pattern for joining streams of messages together is by using context. This is a much more manual approach that uses the function node and should only be considered if the join node doesn't meet your needs. Context is the space where you can store state that exists outside the flow of messages. For our original scenario, receiving two separate sensor readings, the following function node can be used. It starts by storing the received value into context using the message's topic property as the key. It then gets back from context both of the required values, checks they both exist, and if so, constructs a message containing them both and sends it on. Otherwise it returns nothing so the flow goes no further. This implements exactly the same logic as the first join node example, but it shows how you can start building custom logic that goes beyond that simple check. You can also be more selective over which parts of each message are combined and how they get combined. But for most cases, the join node is the right place to start. 